Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for today's video. I think it was summer that I last did a video like this and it was called Champion of the Shelves. And as I look back at the thumbnail for that video, I realize how cringy of a, <laughs> a name that is. I still haven't figured out what to call this series and would be open to your recommendations down below if you care to offer something. So I think I'm just gonna call it something in the neighborhood of top picks by category. I don't know, we shall see. I wanna think of something a little cuter. If you remember that video, I organized my fragrances. Well, I've organized them a bunch of different ways, <laughs> but the latest type of organization that my fragrances have been in and have stayed in for many months now is that I organize by type of fragrance, category, olfactive family, how I see them. And so there's a shelf dedicated to a type, an olfactive type or several olfactive types if I don't have a whole you know, bunch to make up a shelf. And so the concept of the video is to go to each type of fragrance family and select the one that really captures my heart at that time. And last time I committed to doing this by season, I have to be honest with you and say the fall season just blew by. I had a lot of videos that I put out this fall and I had thought about sneaking one of these in there and then just never got around to it. So yes, I'm doing this here at the end of, uh, well, the end of the calendar year, but it's not the end of winter. So it would be twice in a year that I've done it. And I'll try to be better about doing it at least like quarterly in the coming years, because I do think it's fun to see in a collection, in a sea of perfumes, what is really capturing your heart, your mind, your soul? What are you reaching for? So before we venture out on perfume safari around the collection, I have like a built-in wall unit in my bedroom where I store uh, fragrances across six shelves. And then I have a linen closet that houses a lot of my fruity florals, other types of florals, citrus and summery fragrances. And then I have one fragrance shelf that I probably, if I'm being honest, there's something about it that I love the most. That shelf is what I call my white t-shirt fragrance shelf. It's the one where I keep the fragrances that are like the very easiest for me to grab for. I know they're going to smell good on me. I know they're going to be easy peasy. I know they're not going to disturb anyone else around me. They're generally pleasant. And you know, now that I am traveling more for work, I have to think about those fragrances more and more. And probably sadly less about the more powerhouse fragrances at least for work meetings and so there's like i have an affinity for that shelf because it is so easy breezy so let's see what has captured my heart here recently before we go you may notice that i have some discovery sets and fragrance boxes here behind me on the table that is because i am going to be filming a pure giveaway video as a thank you to all of those and in the spirit of holiday giving here at the end of the year these are ones that some are from my own personal collection and some have been sent to me in PR that I would like to pass along to all of my fantastic fragrance friends out here uh, in the YouTube community. So stay tuned for that video coming up next. But let's go explore the fragrance shelves and see what's really jumping out and capturing my attention and my name. What's calling my name? Let's go. Okay, friends. So I am up on a little step stool. Y'all know I'm short. I am just shy of... Well, I'm not shy of, I'm actually 5'3", although my mom says that I'm 5'2 and a half, and I'm just not buying it. I'm, I'm a solid 5'3". So here are my shelves. We're going to go through about 10 shelves, actually 11, because I thought I would do my husband's as well. Please ignore that these shelves have not been dusted. Don't don't be judgy. Don't be judgy. But first, we're going to say hi to Mickey and Minnie up there. Hi, y'all doing? They have their own shelf because they are too cool for school, and I don't really wear them. I spray them every once in a blue moon, but they are really for decoration. I bought them because the bottles were so stinking cute. So we'll stop, start up here on shelf number one, which has some of my sort of off the wall fragrances that I have a hard time putting into other categories. Some of my patchouli fragrances are back here. So fragrances that I'm not sure where else to put. And I just think they're sort of unique. And what's catching my eye right now, my guidance and lineage from Amouage always capture my attention. The black four, the black, to try again, try again, take two. The black orchids from Tom Ford always capture my attention. This is the original, the Parfum, and the Voile de Fleur, which is a flanker that I wore yesterday and is divine. Lots of other things up here are capturing my attention, but I'm going to be really, really honest and really, really basic and say when I look at this shelf, this this bear from Victoria's Secret captured my heart this year in general, and it's one that I crave to wear. It is fresh. There's some citrus. I always feel like there's vanilla in the fragrance, but there isn't vanilla when I look up the notes. There is sandalwood and I believe a floral. I'm forgetting what it is, but it's fresh and it's 
just delightful, really simple fragrance, like a simple beauty type of fragrance. So this would be my top pick from my miscellaneous shelf, which is what I call this. Let's go down to, look at this. Y'all, Marc Jacobs wanted all the attention when he put that bottle together. Let's put that back there. <laughs> down to my bedtime cozy fragrance shelf over here which has also my sort of lemon vanilla fragrances and all of that. And there's a lot to love on this shelf. This is one that I gravitate toward also. I would say today what is capturing my attention that I would reach for first if I wasn't trying to like rotate through fragrances is actually, hmm, see, because you have, look at Blanche Bet. You see her poking through? You see her eye? which is actually just her name, peeking around the corner like, you know you want me. I do, but we're going to give you a break. I'm going to, my eye is drawn right here to Blossom Love from Amouage. By the way, there's a beautiful, beautiful dupe made by Al Haramain called oh. Janoon Rose. Janoon Rose. That's actually up for sale on my Mercari if it hasn't already been purchased. But my eye is really drawn to Linche. Linche from Tiziana Terenzi, which some people say smells like hypnotic poison on steroids. Actually, I'm one of those people. I say that. <laughs> so <laughs> it's powdery, it's vanillic, it's got some brightness to it, and it's really like an intoxicating smell. So that captures my attention. This is really not a bedtime scent, but it's in this sort of powdery, vanillic, almond uh, profile situation happening with some of these fragrances over here. But there's a lot of beauties up here, you guys. Oh my gosh. Sparkle, I can't give this one enough praise. 100 Silent Ways, that's the girl. That's the girl right there. Is this Remember Me? No, this is Fire at Will back here, which is beautiful from Javoy. Sean Kwan, I mean, glorious. Unknown Pleasures captures my heart. All of my lemon, vanilla, sweet fragrances back here are just divine. Yeah, let's go down to the next shelf before I get caught here. Oh, by the way, look at this. Where is it? Here we go, this one. L'Entre de Rouge, I ended up ordering a tester by mistake. I didn't realize I was ordering a tester. So I took one of my old caps off of my Alexandria fragrances. You see, it looks like that. And I put it on that. Does anyone have an extra cap they would be willing to mail to me? My address is in the description box. I would be forever, forever and ever grateful because this just looks bad. Okay, let's go down to the next shelf. Okay, now we are deep into vanilla territory. Remember the last video I did, it was like we were going on safari and I was like, we're entering vanilla territory. <laughs> uh, and there's some of my sexy, super sexy vanillas over on this side, like a mishmash of floral vanilla and other types of things happening here. But vanilla is a note, a common unifying note across this shelf here, especially this part. These are some of the fall gourmandy types of notes. I think I need to go on and sell Call Me By Your Name by Julian perfumes. This is the dupe for Gourmand Cocon, which by the way, Feb Gourmand, is that what it's called? By Guerlain was released. And it is the dupe for Gourmand Cocon. So I have this little bottle here that I've been nursing. And I think I might go ahead and gift myself a full bottle for Christmas of the Feb Gourmand or ask my husband to buy it. But on this shelf, Wow, there are some real beauties here, y'all. I could hang out on this shelf all day and night. I can tell you how I feel about you night and day. Mm -mm. My 80s friends, or was that 90s? Was that early 90s? Name that artist and song. I love you more in the rain or shine, I can tell you. So what's capturing my attention? Angelique Noir. Let's see here. Vanna Gloria. Amouage material is like stealing my soul these days, loving it more and more each time I sniff and or spray it on. Black Opium Le Parfum. Oh, so many pretty ones. Absolute Aphrodisiac, Burberry Goddess. Oh my God, Lune Feline is back there hanging out. How you doing, girl? So many pretty ones. I haven't worn Alien Aura in a while, and I need to because I think it's beautiful. It's an unsung hero from the Mugler line. But I'm gonna be honest. Because I always am. Am I ever not honest with y'all? This is the one. This is the girl that's capturing my attention. Did I talk about her in the same video, like this type of video last time that I did for the last season? Lalique Le Parfum, which has this beautiful, very elegant, mature vanilla scent, like, you know, Hollywood glam vanilla, but it has this beautiful aromatic note. It's a bay leaf note. Bay leaf, like you use for soups and stews and beans and things like that, friends. And it's 
very unique, very beautiful. Wish it lasted longer. You'll get a few hours out of this. Not super long lasting, but there's, look at this one. Donald, Donald, Don, <laughs> I was going to say Donatino. <laughs> Y'all, somebody come get me. Valentino Donna Born in Roma Intense. Glorious fragrance. I mean, I love everything on this shelf. Here is more vanilla goodness. This is my coffee corner and a lot of that has vanilla in it. This is like a mishmash of <laughs> vanilla and other notes in fragrances that I didn't know where else to put. And then we have like some nutty fragrances in here. Vanilla with nuttiness and other spices. You don't belong here. You belong over there ginger biscuit how'd you slide in there uh and over here is some of the fall spicy beauties we're missing angel share oh i know because it's on another shelf but angel shelf usually goes right here this is who are you how'd you sneak in here rouge sarai which is new to the collection we got winter of 99 we got bless baraka we got side effects we got a lot of stuff happening here and lots and lots of beauty so let's kind of scan across here and see what is capturing your attention veronica by the way, have y'all tried the new 18 Vanilla Nera from Stephanie Letta? This is, look, look at the label. Check it out. You can only get it on her website. This is so cute. I also have 22 Auris from her, which is beautiful. I almost grabbed that up here on the, um, like, uh, bedtime, easygoing, very feminine sense shelf. This is, I love that. I love it, love it, love it. But back down here, who's capturing the attention today? Who is it? You got Ojean in the corner. Holding it down, that's my buddy. Mm, we got Sweetly Known from Kerosene. This shelf is a bit of a mess. This is hard. Um, look, look, look at it. Not just because, not just because the packaging is so absolutely freaking adorable, but because this scent is intoxicating. Hufflepuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know people complain that it doesn't last the longest. Okay, all right, all right. Good. Let's get past that and acknowledge that it is a fantastic scent while it does last. So I'm going to put my finger on this one as the chosen one. But if I wasn't going that, you know, down bougie, because that's, that's expensive, I would probably pick up at least today Solche Rosa 62 and layer it with Brazilian Crush Chirosa 71. That is a glorious combination. I wore that last Thanksgiving. I've played with each of these individually since then. We're gonna come back down here. This is shelf number four. I literally call it shelf four because I'm a dork. <laughs> these are my amber fragrances over here. But what are you doing back there? I must not have known where to put one umbrella for two because that one doesn't go back there. We're gonna find your new home. Don't you worry. Don't fret. I know you got lost. We're going to GPS, use GPS and get you back home. So my amber fragrances, and then we move over into tobacco here in the middle, this kind of sort of section, and then my woody fragrances over yonder. Lots of really good ones. Again, listen, Amouage is having a really big year in my life after me dissing the house a few years ago because they were so expensive and bizarre. <laughs> here I am. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Love it on homage, Crimson Rock, and Beach Hut. This is another unsung hero. If you like woody fragrances that are edgy, ladies, this is not a feminine fragrance, but it is really, really good. Ooh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good one. What you got back here? Oh, Cavort. I see you, girl. I see you. And then I got this one in PR, Abrivio, which is a uh, friggin' amazing. That's on So Avant Garde if you're interested in that. What else is standing out here? Ambra Tabac from Daniel Hosier. By far, by far, my favorite tobacco fragrance and has some feminine touches too for my ladies who are scared of tobacco being too masculine. This, look, let me shake it. You're so beautiful. It's so, so good. We got Tabac Rose from BDK. Daring, gorgeous fragrance. Look, look, and number five, just hanging out with the crowd. Hail Bop from Tiziana Terenzi is fantastic. Oh my gosh, so many good ones. Sexy Garrigue from Veronique Gabay. Trish McAvoy, Fragrance X. Are y'all, do y'all know about this? If you don't, you need to. Why did I put Starlight over in there? I don't remember. I got a mishmash. Soma, gosh, there's some good stuff in here. How did Remember Me get up in there? Oh! <laughs> Y'all, y'all, y'all. And I'm not even drinking wine. These are my tea fragrances. I should probably put them up there with my coffee ones. That's why one umbrella for two is down there. I'm such a dork. Okay, let's look across here. What would I choose today to wear? You know what I haven't worn that immediately captures my attention? 
Dune, Dune by Christian Dior. This is the Eau de Toilette or an Eau de Toilette rather. And I just recently learned that Prince or the artist formerly known as Prince, <laughs> I don't know what he called himself at the time of death, that guy, the musical genius, who was, by the way, not like the nicest person. If you ever watch him in interviews, he threw crazy shade on other people. He looked down on other people. He had some kind of personality and maybe like a Napoleon complex because he was a shorty. But man, the man was beyond brilliant in terms of musical talent. This That's not what this video is about. We'll talk about that another day. But <laughs> I learned that he wore Dune. Get out of here. Who would have known? But I would choose to wear this. It's unique. Unique, woody. I believe there's sandalwood. It reminds me it's a warm fragrance. It's warm and dry. This one has a really dry feel to it. There's some florals. It's got a really sort of soul feel to it solar amber woody floral i mean this is this is beyond glorious this would be my choice from this shelf and then we come down here to the shelf that has all of my baccarat rouge fragrances <laughs> let me sit down i'm tired okay and what i mean by that is for some reason i was like opposed to purchasing baccarat rouge 540 when i started my channel just because it was so popular and i wanted to be like contrarian i'm like i'm not gonna buy it but then what did I end up doing? I ended up getting 10,486 dupes. <laughs> I kept my favorite dupes. This is one where I actually love all of the dupes. I don't really feel like I need Baccarat Rouge, but you know, you know what I would say, y'all. If a good sale comes along, it might end up on my shelf. But I have uh, Amber, Amber, <laughs> Al Haramein Amber Oud Rouge. What are you? What is this little thing? Why is this here? Oh my gosh, this is... <laughs> Let me put this aside to try again. This is Santal Royale that was sent to me, or Royal. Royal? Amber Royal? Oud Rouge from Al Haramein. This is the old one. I, I heard that there was new packaging, so I may not know what I'm talking about. Beautiful Cloud, the Orientica uh, Amber Rouge, uh, Instant Crush, and then my favorite, my favorite VR 540-ish fragrance, Trajan. But that's not what this video is about. I also have my ouds in here. I have paired those back quite a bit to just some essential ones. And then we get into sandalwood territory. Oh my gosh, I am realizing I forgot to talk about nude, santal, and heliotrope in my recent sandalwood video. I am so rude. I apologize to you. I apologize to you, nude, santal, and heliotrope. How dare I? So sandalwoods all up in here, and then we get over into leather territory. Leather, like Eartha Kitt, leather. <laughs> and some really intense fragrances. So lots of beautiful things happening on this shelf. You know what's hiding back here? Look at it, it's like, it's playing hide and seek. You know how when little kids play hide and seek, sometimes they hid behind like a power, behind a post or something, but you could still see their body sticking out. That's what's happening here with <laughs> Infinity, which a lot of people pick up cherry. Look at, you can't even see the bottle there, Infinity. A lot of people pick up cherry in this fragrance. I get a little bit, but for me, this is more of like an Udi fragrance. This is what's calling to me right here, Bianco Puto, which if you remember the video where I talked about this when I first purchased it, I was expecting this to be this much cleaner feeling fragrance and it's actually like a like almost nearly gritty at least when you first spray it on oody woody fragrance the note structure has tropical fruits and other things in it it does mellow out really quite lovely quite lovely as you wear it more it is a very daring fragrance but um, I feel like this should have been in packaging that maybe looked like this cap or like that like, so Bianco Puto should have maybe been in this type of packaging, something a little bit more rugged, or maybe even packaging like this, like the Sundal Granada, which I've been given a lot of love to here lately. So I would go with Bianco Puto, but I do want to give a shout out to a newer fragrance in my collection that I haven't had a chance to wear a lot. I wore it once to test and I loved it. And it's Kalahari from Noem which is the same fragrance house that makes Soma, which is another beautiful new one in my collection. But we're gonna go with Bianco Pudo. Pudo. Why did I say it like that? Bianco Pudo. Yeah, it's like a little powdery now. It's interesting how fragrances, either the fragrance evolves as it sits on your shelf and or, because it could be both, my sense of perception when I try it changes. It could be both. It could be both. So this feels like oody, a little powdery, some sweetness. I do get a little tiny bit of fruitiness in here. This is really, really a neat fragrance. Very different and very long lasting, y'all. These Tiziana Terenzi fragrances, they come to win. All I'll do is win, 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 no matter what. Okay, let's go over to other shelves. So I had this super organized at one point 
and the bottom part of the shelf has become absolute madness. This is my scent combination of the day. I don't know who to credit for that. Someone here, actually several someones, because I saw this in multiple comments and multiple videos. And I think I saw it on Facebook also. Several persons talked about mixing, oh, mixing, you don't mix them, you just layer them. Nomad from Bond Number no. 9 with Angel Share today. And I love it. So this is like woody, oody, fruity. Y'all know everything about angel share, spicy, boozy, cinnamony, woody. The combination of those is super glorious and my husband can't stop sniffing me. He's like, oh gosh, you smell so good. Let's start over here. These are for the most part, fruity floral fragrances over in this section. I recently wore this one, Michael Malua, which is why it's sitting down here. We're gonna move Rouge, Rouge smoking out of the way and let's talk about just, let's talk about this corner together. Those are florals and some have fruity aspects of them. So. Deep florals and fruity florals over here. What is capturing my attention today off of these shelves that I would reach for immediately? Because I love this corner. I have to stay away from this corner because this is easy reach. Like I smell dang good in all of these and I want to wear them all the time. So I got to, you know, I got to like spread the love around. Actually, let me put Michael Malul back over in her spot. That's actually called Atara. It's not called Michael Malul. Okay. <laughs> and we're just going to slide Rouge smoking in that little spot right there. Should I go for Tiziana Terenzi again? Because I have ugh, just love in my heart. Like I want to choose Draco, which is a, like a peachy musky fragrance with a touch of powder. But I'm going to give that a break. And I'm going to go with this one. Flower Bomb Nectar. Absolutely gorgeous. Deep vanilla with a gunmetal note. Woo, it's deep. It's beautiful. It's kind of like a lot of the original Flower Bomb DNA, but even deeper very feminine, very sexy fragrance. I'd go for that. If you have not tried the new lychee rose, lychee rose, are we calling it lychee or lychee? Come on pronunciation police. Tell me how to say that. And this is the new Dior. Is it called Dior? J'adore Lore? <laughs> I don't even remember, but it's the new one. And both of these are really good. Get your nose on those in Ulta. I recently wore Narciso too, which is why it's sitting out here. But this little section in here, we're getting into the deeper, more mature florals. Narciso, you need to go back there, my love. Go back to your place. Know where you belong, Narciso. <laughs> I think I would reach for this one. And this is Bora Bora from Giardini de Toscana, which is a white, a heady, a very heady, a uh, thick, dense, white, floral, creamy fragrance with coconut that appears a little bit later on. It opens up like this powerhouse white floral that's almost headache inducing, but is gorgeous. So this got a little bit of playtime this past summer, summer 2023, and then people just kind of forgot about it. And I did not. I still see you and I love you. I send you love and hugs. But other things that are capturing my attention from this section, I'm about to drop this. Honestly, y'all, is everything. <laughs> This is a section of fragrances that I really need to actively stay away from because it's easy for me. I am a big white floral lover and listen, throw in some other notes like something creamy or some nice sandalwood or a little fruity aspect along with the florals and I'm just in heaven. So lots of things capture my attention. All of the, look at the fingerprints on the Michael Kors one. That is so embarrassing. Here I am trying to film a video and I'm nasty. I ain't nasty y'all. It's just fingerprints. I'm joking. Uh, Amarige always has my heart y'all know that of course um i have a love affair with my white narciso cube moon carnival down here gorgeous tuberose gardenia marshmallow powdery lovely fragrance toca florence is a beautiful like gardenia tuberose-esque type of deal y'all see old school poison poison talea how you doing, girl? I didn't forget about you. And I really do like Mango Kiss from Stefan Humbert Lucas or Stefan Umbert Luca, for those of you that are sticklers for pronunciation. We'll have a conversation about that another day. But <laughs> beautiful fragrance. I truly love uh, all of that. And then back over here, remember I was trying to tell y'all, like, I'm not the biggest rose lover. Well, lies. Oh, all of this is rose. All of this. All of it. So, uh, yeah, let's talk. Which one of these would I pull for? Because I'm kind of really having a rose moment, if I'm to be honest. What belongs back there? Oh, <laughs> this one. This one, because this does have rose in it too, but I, I need to uh, use that for another video. I, mm, let me tell y'all, let me, listen, listen to me. 
I talked about this gorgeous thing here, Unica from Antonio Croce. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Fruity, floral. Oh, like I think there's oud in there. It is divine. So is that pavil. Let me just call it. This is the one. This is the newest one. The newest baby to the to the rose collection over here. Andrea Mac or Andrea Mac. I'm gonna go with Andrea pa uh, Mac Pavilion. Wow. Wow, Zers. Really deep, beautiful oudy rose. Oh, it's got a powdery nuance, like a creamy powderiness to it. Friends, look at the little cap on that. That is this this is it this is this is the one do you know the way i know the way and the way is pavilion let's go up to the citrus section here hmm i haven't had my attention on my citrus shelf in a while so this would be challenging but you know i i mean it's not actually classified as a citrus but this one is calling my attention this one ralph lauren safari friends friends do y'all remember? Do you remember the time? Ooh, it's like this dry, dusty, I think is there vetiver or some hay notes or something that's like dry, grassy, uh, also some florals. It has like a shipper feel to it. I don't know if it's classified as one, but my goodness, this brings back all of the 80s memories and I'm here for it. I am here for it. Up on my tropical shelf here. This one is easy and I am going to go for another Titiana Terenzi because I keep sniffing this one and going, no, don't wear it. You have to give others time and attention. <laughs> it's Borea or Borea, which is like a, almost like a coconutty hairspray type of fragrance uh, with, I think there's a good dose of vanilla or something sweet like that in the base. Oh, I just love it. It has a freshness to it, but it's also like grown and ladylike as well. So I love that. All of these are wonderful. I love, I love my coconuts. Am I going to say put the lime in the coconut? Well, I just said it. So you got to put the lime in the coconut. All right, let's go. So I call this, although it's not actually, but I call it my white t-shirt shelf. These are the super easy reach fragrances that I'm probably always going to be in the mood for and that I can throw on, you know, with a pair of jeans, part of my socks over yonder, pair of jeans and a t-shirt, you know, run out to do errands. Or, or if I'm going to a work meeting, I usually come to this shelf to choose something. And I don't have space for one that really belongs up here. I have to figure out what's leaving to make room for this big bottle. Hydra. Hydra. So we're going to put that one down there because that is not the one that I would select today. Although I do want to wear that soon because it's beautiful. But you know what's really... Did, did I just say true? True know what's really... I literally said that. I said, but you know, but you know, but do you know... <laughs> <laughs> Y'all, that's the Bronx coming out in me. Do you know what I would reach for off of this shelf today? Because I cannot stop reaching for it. This beauty right here. Solinej. Solinej. I love this. And I also am into Metallique and Pear Ink from Juliet Has a Gun. These have been capturing my attention and have been traveling with me. My battery just got low. <gasps> Oh, my light ran out. My light was like, nope, we're not shining because you take up too much battery. Solinej, beautiful vanilla citrus. What else is in there? I think there's some floral at the top. Bright, happy, easygoing. Love, love, love this fragrance. So that would be my choice from this shelf. Although really I could wear any of these any time of day, all day, every day. I, I love this shelf. This is like the easy breezy shelf. So here is my husband's shelf. His is not, you know, organized like mine. He just puts them up there and he's happy with that. And if he's happy, mama's happy. Look at the cat back there all sideways. But I love his collection. He's got a much more pared back, disciplined collection of items that he truly loves. And he's gotten rid of the rest that he is not that into. And I adore all of these. But if I had to choose one, y'all already know, it's going to be Naxos. This is glorious honey and lavender and tobacco and vanilla and woodiness this is power and sexiness and confidence and gloriousness and special occasion and i own the room this is i own the room energy naxos love 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 that so i would absolutely choose that from this shelf so friends i hope you enjoyed that little journey slash safari around the perfume shelves have you ever gone to Rainforest Cafe? Probably my favorite thing is before you actually go in and the person's up there at the elephant, the hostess at the elephant, right? She goes, Veronica, party of five. Your safari's ready.
or your expedition or whatever they say is ready. Rainforest Cafe is super cool. But anyway, thank you so much for hanging out with me to see what jumps out from each shelf. Were there any surprises for you? Was there anything else on those shelves that caught your attention as you were watching? And what are you grabbing for these days? Let us know in the comments, y'all. We are nosy and we want to know what's capturing your fragrance heart. See you in the next video and stay tuned for the video that will focus on the fragrances behind me, which will all be sent to my beautiful viewers out there. Take care.